Hi, I'm a counseling psychologist. I work with Fortis Hospital Noida and we are basically going to have a discussion on study skills and how to beat exam anxiety. Why this session is really important, first of all, is especially in the present situation is because this entire year very unexpected and when this year has been very unexpected and uncertain. Apart from the regular learning that we do in school, there was a lot of unexpected adjusting to the new lifestyle adjusting to the uh, you know being confined to the home the changes around this new lifestyle that we had to accommodate having our classes virtually not having you know a fixed routine at times because you know because of because our body is adjusting with this our mind is adjusting with these lifestyle changes sometimes we used to go off our routine as well so considering how unexpected this year has been there have have been a lot of challenge, especially for children. So the kind of stimulating environment you used to get at school, which perhaps helped you a little to maintain that concentration and motivation when it comes to studies, wasn't there anymore. So that in-person school environment and interaction got reduced uh, to a bare minimum. Well, not even bare minimum from the last uh, you know, eight, nine months. We have just been at home, so it, it became completely virtual, the in-person interaction wasn't there. So because there was a screen in between and the interactions were happening virtually and that stimulating environment wasn't there, it became harder to keep our focus intact while studying on an online medium. And like I said, uh, the screen time for us has increased incredibly. All our classes are happening uh, online. If we have to interact with people because we are also practicing social distancing as much as possible. Uh, our personal interactions also went on an online medium. So because the screen time increased for us incredibly, it somewhere started to interfere with our daily schedule, right? If you used to earlier get up around 6, 6.30, take a shower, have good breakfast, then go to school. Now that routine wasn't there anymore. You know that the virtual classes are going to happen. So let's say if the timings of your class is starting is eight, your first class starts at eight. Perhaps a lot of us were getting up around, you know, five, 10 minutes before they just washing our face and sitting in front of our laptops or tablets or mobiles. It wasn't there anymore. The schedule wasn't there anymore. So and on top of that, considering how young people have a lot of energy and the avenues to exert that energy, those uh, you know avenues to go out and play, the outdoor activities got reduced as well because of precautions that were in place. So these were some basic challenges that students were specially facing and that added to a lot of stress. And now that the exams are going to start, different kind of stress that we are feeling, not just around the lifestyle because of COVID times, but also because of the exams. The exams are going to happen online, uh, so it brings in a different kind of nervousness and jittery. Uh, earlier where we used to, you know, make sure that we know what the sitting arrangement is like in what uh, in which classroom I am supposed to sit, which is my desk in that particular classroom, which row, which number. Now we look out for the most quiet, distraction free, good, connect, good, good connectivity corner in our home where we can sit and give our exam. Right. So the kind of, uh, you know, environment that we are looking out for, the kind of uh, precautions we used to take have changed a little. There were earlier we used to sit for pen paper exams. So there was minimal technological um, skill that was required. Right. But now that you're going to give your exams, the exams are going to be Internet and computer based. A concern is that, you know, first of all, my connection should be good. It shouldn't get interrupted. There shouldn't be any kind of a glitch that happens. And apart from that, because you are using internet and a platform online platform to give exam, this is some kind of digital proficiency that is required. You should be able to so that technological uh, knowledge is also required this time around. Earlier, there used to be teachers who were physically present in the class as an invigilator, not just to keep an eye on whether cheating is happening or not, but also at times they were a very reassuring presence. So if you have a doubt, if you are you know, uh, scared in that particular moment, they were right there to calm you down to answer your queries. But now that in physical presence is not there anymore, even invigilation has gone online. 
right? So sometimes glitches can happen and those are beyond your control, which adds to the kind of anxiety we are feeling around. So this session is going to be essentially divided into three segments. One first one where I'm going to talk about certain skills that you can use to enhance your study patterns as in how you can still keep your motivation high. How can you study better and smart? So that's going to be the first thing that I'm going to talk about. After that, we'll be moving to, uh, of course, the exam anxiety. What do you do in terms of taking care of your own self to beat that exam anxiety? Third thing, the third segment of today's session is going to be around adjusting to the digital lifestyle and what you know do's and don'ts are involved over there. So like I said, studying smart, studying hard helps definitely, but when you study hard and smart, it leads to best results, right? So start, starting with the very first skill, study skill is time management. Uh, I cannot emphasize this enough how you know all of us, all the students who are here, all the teachers when they were students would have heard this from their parents, you know, manage your time. That's the key to everything, right? And it is. So the first skill within time management is how to high present situation where we are bound to our homes majorly, right? Our prioritization should inc include all of these things that you can see at your screen. Time with friends, family, time for your own self, your sleep, hobbies, food, exercise routine, your classes, homework. And work here basically means I'm hoping that you guys are also contributing towards you know, some or the other household chore for your family, right? So a lot of it should be including all of these things. But unfortunately, because of again, a lot of uh, our time going online, this is what it looks like. Uh, we have our online classes, our interaction, personal interaction has also gone online mostly. So social media usage is there because of increased uh, screen time, physical movement has reduced. Our lifestyle has become even more sedentary. Plus, we do not have the option of going outside as much as possible. You know, stay inside the so movement and all of these things have to also, you know I'll, even if we are bound to homes there is a way to prioritize everything in your life you may not, not be able to do all of these things every day but you need to that's why what can you write? This is a simple two by two process of two factors. Is this important? Right? Whatever be your number one priority. Whatever is not important, not due soon. Number four, the last priority. Anything that is important, not due soon. Number two, because it is really important goal for you, important task for you. Number three, something that's not important, but due soon because the deadline is sooner. You put it as a number three priority. The reason to can, something that's that may not be as important, but is due soon can also be your number two priority. Right? Right? The entire thing this grid is so you Think of all the tasks that you have to do in the and so that if today you are struggling with time, you would know what all tasks can push off tomorrow. Perhaps you know to a day after tomorrow. So number four box tasks that you have to uh, you know move to another. Day. But number one box is something that you need to attend first so that all your maybe assignments, submissions, they happen. So for focusing on can help. <laughs> Sorry about that. Another thing is uh, activity scheduling. So I think a lot of us, uh, again, I would also like to involve teachers here. When we were kids, we used to make this kind of a timetable for ourselves, right? We used to all of us used to make it, but very few of us, you know, rarely of a child or two in the class are able to follow through this kind of a timetable. 
and it's not that you are lacking something and that is why you're not able to follow this timetable the problem lies with this timetable if you look at this timetable it is holding you accountable for every minute uh, of your day Right. I'm so sorry about that. OK, so the, as I was saying, the problem lies with this timetable. It's holding you accountable for every minute of your day, which is practically not possible. There is no flexibility in this timetable. There is no uh, element of realism in this timetable. For example, I thought that I'll be studying uh, maths, you know, between 6 to 8 p.m., but there was an emergency situation that happened. Now, because it's an emergency situation, I can't even ignore it, right? So this timetable is not flexible. It doesn't allow me to take breaks. We do not never schedule breaks in this kind of a timetable, right? So that is why we end up failing. We are not a robot that we can, you know, follow such a cut to cut timetable and we end up failing here. The timetable that we should be making should look like this. Just three columns activities that you want to do today. So let's say I wanted to study maths for uh, maths geography and I wanted to take out time for my art practice or any other hobby that you have. And I thought that because the chapter that I'm going to do in maths is easy, I'll give it one hour. The so chapter that I'm going to study in geography is a little difficult, so I'll give it like one and a half hour and art activity I'll do for another half an hour. So that was my expected time. Maths, one hour, geography, one and a half hour, art, half hour. But when I sat down to study, Maths took me maybe a little bit more, you know, an hour and 15 minutes. I was somehow able to finish geography within my time limit. And when I was doing that, I didn't realize for how long I was doing it. And I ended up doing it for more time. So what happens here is this kind of a that to fill in the third column. How much time? So what happens here is this kind of a timetable over a period of time helps you understand what all subjects, what all chapters and portions in the a particular subject take how much that while you are going to prepare for your exams you would know how much time to dedicate to each subject and to each individual chapter within that subject and that because that helps you again manage your time well right so this is the kind of activity scheduling that we should be doing instead of following this kind of a robotic timetable for ourselves second study and exam skills that we need to focus on is creating the right kind of atmosphere and environment for ourselves to study. So like I was saying earlier that, you know, uh, we lie down in the bed with our phones and tablets to study, right? Or, or notebooks for that matter. Now, one thing to remember here is that your brain is really, really sharp. It no, it will, it makes a lot of connections and associations over a period of time. Right? So you have always been sleeping on bed. When you go to a classroom, when you go to your school to study, you're studying on a table and chair, right? So your brain knows that on bed I'm supposed to sleep. Plus considering the kind of weather that's out there with a blanket on, you're definitely going to fall asleep, right? So one thing that I would recommend is never study on bed. Your brain knows that this is where I have to rest and relax. About 80 to 90% of the time, make sure that you have a fixed study corner where you are studying. It could be your, uh, you know, uh, study table. It could be any chair table with which you can make a small corner for yourself. If you do not have any chair table option also, just take a bed table, but create your own corner and make sure that every time you're studying, you're studying in that corner. This is like stimulating the classroom scenario for your brain. Your brain knows that this is the corner where I study. So this is where I need to concentrate and I need to work at my maximum potential. So create a study corner and make sure that you're studying there. Your posture should be erect. Like, you know, you sit in the classroom and you study. Make sure that that study corner that you create doesn't have a lot of distraction options available, right? So declutter it. If today I'm studying maths, there should be maths notebook, um, a maths book, a notebook in which I'm going to solve the problems, a bit of a stationery like pen, pencils, a bit of that, not too much of it also, a glass of water, and that's it. No other notebooks, no other uh, stationary, fancy stationary around because the more things are around you, the more distraction will happen. 
uh, don't keep your gadgets around you at that point of time for that matter ensure that there is no tv or music also playing a lot of students feel that music helps them in studying well but what we need to remember is that uh, when your your our brains are not designed to multitask when you're doing two things together both the things are basically uh, trying to attract your brain's concentration and attention at that point of time right so your brain is divide the attention of your brain is divided right that is why we say that don't talk on phone when you are driving right because we can't multitask so at that point of time it can be very very pleasing that you are studying with the music on but then what ends up happening is it's difficult to recall that information during exam time so what ends up happening is uh, i remember the page number i remember something was written in the right corner but i don't remember what was written in the right corner right because at that point of time my mind was divided we focusing on two different things so make sure it's a distraction not even extra stationary too many extra stationary around how long you should be studying is a very very important question sometimes we sit for hours together right because we are in that zone but what we need to remember is humanly it's not possible to sit for that long and have good concentration level as well right at a time our mind can focus on a thing for about 45 minutes and then the concentration goes down so what is recommended is that even if you want to study for let's say 4 5 hours a day okay uh, every one hour study for 45 minutes then take a break of 15 minutes come back study again for 45 minutes take a break of 15 minutes make sure that you are studying in your study corner and when you are taking that break you leave that study corner Uh, do some physical activity no screen time during your break because when you are studying you are utilizing your eyes and brain a lot so give yourself a break move your body a little that will make sure that your body also doesn't feel stiff and you don't end up having a lot of pains in your body right so what i would recommend as a break uh, what to do in that break is first of all don't do anything that's more interesting than studies otherwise you won't be able to come back right second thing is uh maybe you know have your lunch breaks bathroom breaks uh, help your mom around with a, a mom or father around with a household chore anything that helps you move physically just take a small walk in your own home and come back anything that moves your body just do that okay don't study too many new things in one go because it's too much of new information for your brain to process and that won't work out start with easy things first when you tick off those easy things that you have done it gives you more motivation and confidence so that will help you uh, prepare your mind for studying the harder sub, uh, harder portions of the subject as well highlighting is important but do not highlight the entire page the purpose of highlighting is that when i look at that one word i'm able to recall what was written on this page or part right so only highlight important words also color coding helps you remember well so your brain it it is able to remember colors well it is able to remember images well so again when you are studying use as much flow charts diagrams graphics di you know to help yourself remember more information use mnemonic devices so for example if even now i'll ask any one of you to write down what are the seven colors in the rainbow you will remember it because of one word vibgyor so vibgyor is one word that helps you remember a larger information similarly there are other mnemonic devices that you can create by your own self to remember larger information another study technique is chunking so how do we remember phone numbers it's a 10 digit number we usually chunk it into divided into portions either 3322 or 334 you know like that so that's called chunking we are able to remember the answers in signs better than history because scientists we get bullet points what we do in history is that we write a huge paragraph right but if you when you are learning divide that huge paragraph into certain important uh, you know chunks of portions for yourself and your mind will be able to remember it better rather than one whole paragraph so chunking is again something that you can that is important how much effort you put there is different kinds of memories that are used when you are learning and when you have to recall right so when you are learning but you also have to prepare right 
and second thing here is that without any fault of yours um one psychologist did some research to figure out that whenever not just studies whenever we have you know done something on day 1 uh, maximum forgetting of information happens in the first 24 hours about 80% of what we have learned we will definitely forget it in the first 24 hours so revision is extremely important and based on a certain so the certain body of research this is a revision routine that is recommended whatever you have studied on day 1 revise it on day 2 so that that maximum forgetting that is happening you can prevent that then revise it on day 7 day 15 day 30th first of all multiple revisions better recall right second thing a lot of students here tell me that you know if if i'm studying something and then revising it four times it will consume a lot of my time but remember if you have something one let's say it, it it took you one hour to study that the second day when you're revising it will not take you exactly one hour it will take you lesser time and consequently the more revision right because you're able to remember the information so it wouldn't be very time consuming just give it a shot self testing is important a lot of us what we do is we solve sample papers and that's it so solving the sample papers is really really great Uh, stimulate the environment of the exam when you're doing that sample paper. So sit in your study corner, tell everyone in your home for the next three hours, no one is supposed to disturb me. I'm going to sit for my test, right? And you time yourself and you do it. But after finishing that exam, that's not the end of it. Once you are done with the sample paper, give yourself a break, come back, and then check that paper for yourself. Give yourself marks on that paper. When you check that paper for yourself, you will be able to identify. what kind of mistakes do you make if at all you're making mistakes and, and, and then that will prevent you that knowledge will prevent you from repeating the same mistakes during your actual self test uh, helps you not just to uh, you know in terms of preparation in terms of making sure that you're able to finish your test on time but also to recognize what kind of mistakes you make so that you don't repeat them okay maintain a sheet like this when you do the self testing right and let's say so if you know there are uh i am doing solving uh, ma a math sample paper one every week so every week i am writing down the date on which i solved the paper and the score that i obtained now what happens is a lot of us at times feel very very anxious during exams even though we are spending a lot of time studying and we can see that we are spending a lot of time studying we do not feel confident in ourselves that we you know i have prepared enough so when you prepare when you keep such a score sheet for yourself this works as the hard uh, you know fact that you can feed to your mind when you are feeling that kind of anxiety and lack of confidence right you are feeling very very low on confidence and you feel that you are not prepared enough but you can feed these numbers to your mind and tell yourself that no i solved the paper five times see the kind of scores that i'm getting i am preparing right and uh, you know i will be able to accomplish so you keep a record of yourself as well that will help you boost co your confidence as far as concentration is concern there are a couple of exercise that are that works wonderfully well so uh, first exercise is something that we call as uh, instrument listening to instrumental music so uh, when you are listening to instrumental music in the very beginning decide on what particular musical instrument you are going to focus on so musical instrument uh, musical uh, instrumental music piece when we say musical uh, instruments as a part of it right Try, decide from the very beginning which one musical instrument you want to focus on and try to focus only on the rhythm of that one instrument throughout the piece initially it will be difficult the more you practice because it's a skill the more you practice the better you will get at it what's happening here is that through your ears your brain is comprehending the entire music piece that's going it's listening to all the instruments but you're training your brain to focus on only one to eradicate everything else and you know focus on only one that helps with improving your concentration something similar is that what you can do so this is through auditory uh, auditory senses something similar is what you can do via your visual senses so if you move on to the fourth point here the e exercise so e exercise is basically take up two article at random you have to skim so reading is when i am reading the article and comprehending what's written written skimming is that i'm just quickly reading scanning through the article 
So skim through the article and cancel every E that appears. Again, by your eyes, your brain is seeing all the alphabets, but you're teaching your brain to focus on only E, right? So that again helps with concentration and then a lot of brain exercises like solving Sudoku, puzzles, mazes, find six differences, chess, guess the word. These kind of games also enhance your cognitive skills and concentration, right? So doing this will also help you. Now we are coming to the exam stress. OK, so things that you need to be careful of a day before your exam. A lot of us pull an all nighter as in we stay up all night revising everything possible before the exam or studying new things before the exam. Whatever you have missed out in the one year, you can, you won't be able to. I wouldn't use the word can. You won't be able to, you know. Uh, study it that well a day before as well it will only add to your anxiety so instead of studying anything new a day before a night before revise everything that you have done so far that will boost your confidence that will make you more self-assured about how you have prepared for the exam so only revise don't study anything new and like i said don't pull an all-nighter as in don't stay up the entire night sleep is very very essential for you even during your exam time, I think this is something that I need to emphasize with parents. I wish parents were here, right? But you can always tell your parents too. About seven to eight hours of sleep is extremely essential. If you're not sleeping well, again, your memory, your brain will be very, very fatigued in the morning. And with the brain that is and confused, you won't be able to give a good exam, right? You won't be able to remember information well, recall it well and write it down and organize your thoughts for that matter. So give yourself proper rest, have good dinner, go off to sleep on time. Make sure that you're eating healthy, right? Not a lot of junk food, prefer a lot of seasonable fresh, seasonally available fresh fruits and vegetables, right? Do some kind of physical activity. You are young kids. Like I said, you have a lot of energy, even though going outside is not a good option right now, but do some kind of physical activity inside home itself. Right? There are workouts that you can do uh, on your terrace, in your balcony, in inside your room itself. But make sure that there is a physical activity that is happening. Right before your exam, make sure that you're sitting down comfortably. The spot, the study corner that you have, uh, you know, is a comfortable space to be at. Check your internet connection. Make sure that you've revised everything. But again, no last minute study. OK, revision is a separate matter, but no last minute. Uh, when you are sitting for the exam, so like we used to earlier reach the exam or 15 minutes prior this time around try to log in 15 minutes prior so that if in case there is bad network or uh, there is issue with connectivity you are able to uh, you know identify that and perhaps you know rectify that before you actually so log in 15 minutes early settle down do some breathing exercises if you're feeling nervous make sure there's you know bottle of water right next to you uh, in case you need it you don't have to get up again and again when you are attempting the paper, do the easy questions first. Read one question, the next one. In case you come across a question that you do not know the answer to, attempt the next one, right? And once you have done uh, all the questions is when you come back to these particular questions, right? So always do the easy questions first. That will help you, again, keep your confidence up throughout the exam. Once the exam is over, no postmortem of the question paper with your friends asking how was your uh, you know paper what was the answer of this question one ba bad exam a few mistakes not even one bad exam a few mistakes in one paper can ruin your entire exam season let's say i gave my first exam and after that i was discussing it with my friend and i realized that my three of my answers are wrong now i'm in a very foul mood because my uh, my very first exam and i have made three mistakes now with this sad, low, foul mood, I wouldn't be able to prepare well for the next exam and the pattern will repeat. If I'm not prepared well, the exam won't go well, right? And then the next exam, then the next exam, then the next exam. So what is important is to remember that whatever you have now written and submitted is not something that you can write and write or submit again. So what has happened has happened. Now your focus should be on the next exam. So once your exam is over, uh, you know, have your uh, lunch, sleep, get up, 
do some physical recreational activity for a while and then come back to studying. Give yourself that good break before you start studying again, right? But do start studying again because we also have to keep time in perspective when we are doing all of this, right? Now coming to the third and the final aspect, adjusting to the digital lifestyle. Just as important it is to stay connected as some, you know, it's also very essential to unplug and detox, right? You, like I said, physical activity has gone down incredibly. So make sure that there's some or the other alternate that you're doing. Walk is something that you can do. A small workout routine is something that you can do. Just helping around home, uh, you know, is something that you can do. So make sure that you're taking regular breaks. Uh, class time is not something that we can reduce. So that screen time is going to stay there. But see what other screen time you can potentially reduce a little. Engage in taking care of yourself. Engage in, uh, you know, things like spending time with your pets, watering the plants, uh, you know, doing your art or music or whatever hobby that you have, you know, knitting, sewing, uh, playing a sport, if at all it's possible in the present scenario for you to do it. If it's a group sport, I would still recommend don't, uh, you know, do that. Uh, we have to be very mindful of the precautions that are there in place. But use music and art to relax. It doesn't matter uh, what kind of art you end up making. The end product is not of importance. What is important is did you enjoy that process of playing with colors? That's important. Spend time with your families. A lot of us feel that because we have is playing online, but there are things that you can engage in uh, which are off so board games. You can play carom, chess, monopoly. There are thousands of other board games that are there, you know, so play those kind of games with your family. It combines again your recreation time also, your family time also and your gaming time also. So do these kind of activities. Uh, leave your study space every now and then, like I said, those 15 minutes that you are doing to re-energize and, you know, bring your concentration back. Make sure that you are connected with your friends and family members. Talk about what you're feeling. Talk about what they might be feeling and if, if they feel comfortable talking to you about their own feelings. If you're nervous, if you're, in, if you're feeling anxious, I'm about to experience, they might be able to help you out, help you out, at least listen to you which works as a great cathartic pleasure. Get out and blow off that steam. Make sure that you are sleeping well, you are eating well. No intake of coffee as much as possible because usually we have coffee to make sure that, you know, we are keeping up at night. But like I told you, how important it is for you to sleep at night. And when I said that you need to sleep for seven to eight hours, I mean seven hours at a stretch, not five hours in the night and three hours in the morning. At a stretch, at a time, okay. make sure that you still take your time for your uh, hobbies. Uh, as important as it is to study, frequent breaks and re recreational activities also help your brain, uh, you know, to prepare well for the time when you have to sit and study. So until unless you get that break, you won't be able to concentrate when you get down to and then of make sure that you're following all the precautions. Uh, you're practicing social distancing you are, uh, at regular intervals. You're un using sanit uh, you know, san hand sanitizer. You're sanitizing anything and everything that comes through your door. It's very, very important to keep yourself and your family safe at this point of time, right? This is uh, a comic book that we have uh, where basically we have talk, talked about this. We have talked a few of them. So I'll go to the entire. So students have access to get on loud music, have coffee, take an energy drink, watch a video, call a friend. If wanted to study at night you were feeling sleepy or for that matter but if you are sleepy your brain is not in a position right so i'm not giving that my mind and body is asking for i'm forced and when i'm studying i'm also not able to remember anything from it 
So, bet, so basically, I'm just wasting my time over there, right? Not able to accomplish any of the two things. So, what I would rather suggest is go sleep for, you know, take a power nap, sleep for 30 minutes or one hour, and back with a fresh mind to study. That would be a better thing to do rather than wasting your time, not attending to your body, or not being able to study either. So these are some, this is so because I would rather answer your questions. So I'm just uh, there are these two videos. If you go on YouTube and for this exam, it's more or less what we have discussed in the webinar today and a bit more. So if you want, it's just two, two and a half minute video. You can watch that. The other one, the parent toolkit is basically for the, uh, their students and children. When it comes to coping with exam stress. So what I'll do is for having of the, the lead map and it, uh, on the class groups, uh, because I would really like to save time to answer the queries. If we do have time by the end of the session, I'll play these two videos. Last and most important, this is our helpline number. So Fortis Department, the Department of Mental Health and Behavioral Sciences at Fortis, we run a helpline number. This is first of all toll free, so you don't get charged when you call here. When you call here, you get connected to a professional psychologist. Even I pick up you know, calls on. There. It is available in 16 different languages, including Hindi and English. It's confidential, so you don't have to worry about your information getting out somewhere. It's anonymous. You don't even have to tell your name. So if you are facing any kind of psychological, uh, behavioral, emotional issue and you want to talk to someone, you can call on this helpline. This is not just for students. It's for everyone. So you can, you know, uh, share this number with anyone you feel needs to speak to. Right? So this was all I said. Now, now, like I said, I would like to take up queries that students might have posed. Uh, I just sh stop sharing this and get back to chat window to see if there were any questions that I ever put up. Yes, if we have any questions, you can write if in the chat. Any box. questions, you can write in the chat box. Any problem that you are facing personally and you want to understand how to deal with that situation. I understand that at times it's very, very uh, well, you know, difficult to speak in a public forum and say, say that I'm struggling with problem, but I'm pretty sure a lot of us If any one of us have any questions, we can write in the chat box. I'm so sorry. I lost connection for a while. I'm back. I hope I'm audible. Yes, ma'am, you were audible. Yes. OK, great. So any questions or else I can play those two videos. So I'll do one thing. I'll play those two videos. And meanwhile, if you have any query, you can write it down in the chat box.
So this one was the video that I was saying that is meant for you guys as students, which is kind of a recap of the entire session that we had. And now I'll show you the parent and uh, teacher toolkit. So that was all that I had to share and any queries, any questions any student has. They can ask. Yeah, Pratibha ma'am, I think uh, the session was very, very clear and they do not have much, uh, much queries. Uh, on behalf of Millennium, Millennium family, I take this opportunity to thank you so much. Uh, the strategies given by you, the way suggested, they are very, very practical. And these are small things which children, uh, students, they may ignore in day to day, uh, you know, in their day to day lifestyle. Like I really like the uh, now the uh, weather is also like that. The students, they would like to sit on bed and study, but then you have told them how our brain is trained that when we are on bed we need to take uh, we need uh, to take sleep there so we may not be able to concentrate so all these strategies you have discussed they were very practical and i think of much use for students so once again we are really thankful that you took time out and you helped our students out thank you so much and hope to have more workshops from you in future sure ma'am thank you so much for having me here yeah thank you okay